Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Tim Chiodo. I am the lead payments processors and fintech analyst at Credit Suisse. <clears throat> the panel today we're, is titled The Intersection of Software and Payments and the Range of Options in Embedding Payments for Those Software Companies. Uh, we'll start out with a few introductions, uh, then we'll get into uh, an investor perspective, speaking with Ashley from Bain. We'll talk a little, bit, a little bit about that range of options that we referenced earlier, and then we'll talk about a unique product recently launched by both Phoenix and Fat Merchant called Phoenix Flex. Uh, we'll aim to uh, wrap up with a few thoughts around other financial services that can be embedded into software platforms. So with that, I want to introduce our three uh, exceptional panelists. I'm going to start with Ashley. Uh, Ashley is a Ashley Paston is a principal at Bain Capital Ventures. We have Richie Serna, who is CEO and co-founder of Phoenix. And we have Sanira Madani, who's the CEO and founder of Fat Merchant. Let's talk a little bit about the investor's perspective. So we're going to turn to Ashley. Ashley will tell us a little bit about how she got interested in this concept of software companies embedding payments. Talk a little bit about the value proposition. Thank you, Ashley. Of course. Thanks, Tim. Well, when we think about the future of financial services and fintech, it will be all about meeting customers where they are in the software they use in their everyday lives. And that's true for four reasons. First and foremost, it's zero CAC. So it's, you've already sold the merchant software. It is a very easy and simple cross-sell to sell them payments as compared to you know, merchant 1.0, feet on the street, trying to sell merchants in the wild effectively. Number two is the novel functionalities. So as a software company, you have a persistent relationship with your end customer and are therefore able, especially if you're a vertically specific software, to spin up unique functionalities for your end customer. So a really good example of this is a company called Squire. Squire is a vertically specific software for barbershops and they've developed very unique payment functionalities because they know their customers so well. So a good example of this is they enable you to split your tip between the person who cuts your hair and the person who washes your hair, which is a functionality that a, a, a horizontal payments player would not think or, or you know, be able to develop in a, as much of a nuanced way as Squire is able to. The third reason is the very unique data advantage. So because you are the software, you are the heart and lungs of the merchant. You are their CRM, their loyalty, their payments, their backend. You are everything to this customer. You are therefore best positioned to underwrite that merchant because you know all the data about them. You know that you know on Mondays from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., there's a lot of foot traffic and a lot of people ordering oat milk lattes as an example, and they don't have as much foot traffic on Wednesday afternoons. And so you're best positioned to understand and underwrite that merchant for not just payments, but also other products like lending and insurance and others. And the fourth reason, which I think is, is the main reason, um, is the monetization opportunity. So as you take more of the payments in-house, you're better able to monetize off of the transaction flow that comes over your system. And a really good example of this is Lightspeed. So Lightspeed is a vertically specific software in restaurants and retail. And historically, they had used the referral model. So they would get 25 bips per transaction for all the payments that float over their system. In January 2019, they launched Lightspeed Payments, which enabled them to become a payfac and therefore capture about 65 bips per transaction, which is a monumental increase in terms of revenue capture. And that was actually powered by, by Phoenix here. And that was one of, the, one of the many reasons we were so excited to back them. And Richie already spoiled my point, but I remember meeting him two years ago in a food court at Money 2020 as he took a napkin and drew out the payments ecosystem and where Phoenix fit in that mapping. And it was at that moment, for me at least, where I, I thought, first and foremost, this is a team we need to back. But secondly, embedding of payments into software is the future, and this is a trend we need to get behind at Bain. Very nice. I, I like the whiteboarding session there. That's great. And also, I should have kept that napkin, but other than that, <laughs> no regrets. Very nice. Hopefully, we'll get to do that next year in person. All right, great. That, so that gets to the, the heart of the panel. So why don't we move on to this range of options that gets to the title of the session here, the range of options that are available to software platforms that want to embed payments. And with that, I want to first turn it over to Richie. 
Yeah, absolutely. So historically, there have really been two main options for rolling out your payment strategy. On one end of the spectrum, you have these very developer-targeted providers that are really easy to use, but, could, but very quickly become very expensive. And the other part is that you don't truly own the customer relationship or that customer experience. On the other end of the spectrum, you have these companies who are actually building the entire payments infrastructure from scratch. And usually, you only wanted to do that because it only made sense when you were doing something north of a billion dollars in volume. That's what companies like Airbnb and Uber have done. But most SaaS companies don't have the luxury of spending millions of dollars or hundreds of engineers to just work on payments alone. It's just not sustainable for most SaaS companies. And so what we've done at Phoenix is really provide a third option that really brings together the best of both worlds. So by working with an infrastructure company like Phoenix, SaaS companies of all sizes and in every single industry can now become payment facilitators without the insanely complex and expect, expensive, excuse me, technical investment of building these types of solutions in house. And so we always like to say that this is very similar to what happened to AWS and web services a number of years ago. Prior to AWS, uh, if you guys all remember, prior to this sort of wave of the cloud, uh, you'd have to rack your own servers. You had to hire a massive team of engineers to work on your DevOps. And then this quickly ballooned into this very complex and time consuming part of your organization. And so what AWS did was they provided a better way. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here for the world of payments. Great. Thank you, Richie. Really appreciate that. I think this is a good time. We mentioned we touched on this earlier. So Nira, we should go to you and talk a little bit about the Omni Connect solution and how that fits into this discussion. I couldn't, um, I appreciate that. And I couldn't agree with Richie more. Um, and also Ashley in regards to how software companies are viewing payments as part, it has to be part of their day to day. And it's now uh, demanded by consumers. So it's not even just from a software's perspective of monetization anymore. I want to take it a step further um, because consumers, as consumers, we're demanding everything to be um, within the softwares that we're using, including payments. And so I think with that shift, um, there's quite an incredible opportunity in the marketplace today. And as we're seeing more companies raise their hand and say, hey, I want to embed payments, what Unfortunately, it's also uh, the truth in our ecosystem is that it's really complicated. And Phoenix has done an incredible job of solving um, a big component of, you know, of this infrastructure. But even beyond that, they don't even know where to go get a bin sponsorship. They don't even understand uh, KYC and underwriting tools. They don't even understand, okay, yes, now that I have my settlement engine and everything in place, what happens post-transaction and transactional monitoring and actually growing my portfolio? So there is actually, um, you know, a, an entire uh, journey of this customer from start of, of just even becoming payment certified to actually growing their portfolio. And there is there is an entire avenue that is not being um service in the market today. And this is our, uh, you know, this is where we launched Omni Connect. And I'm so excited to also talk about our partnership with Phoenix soon, um, it, you know, in regards to how we're bringing this to market. But Omni Connect is pretty much your all in one solution when you don't want to take on the entire infrastructure because it, it's expensive. Um, it's it requires a ton of tools, it requires people as little as and as great as we can make it with technology, there's still that level of complexity that we can't remove. Um, and so Omni Connect is in, you know, proprietary, um, you know, full full suite of solutions to get that software company up and running in payments within 60 days without having them to take on that risk, without having them to understand underwriting and having all the tools in house, including Phoenix's settlement engine that we use for Omni Connect. Excellent. Thank you, Sanir. You really did a nice job of bringing to life some of the real life problems and how the solutions can help to solve those. So for another example of, of solving for some of those uh, problems, why don't we move to Ashley? I think Ashley, across your portfolio at Bing Capital Ventures, you've seen many platforms that have sort of gone through this decision process, ranging from the ISV to the full-fledged payback. Maybe give an example of one of your portfolio companies, where they landed and how they solved for this. Yeah, so one of our portfolio companies, Passport, is a vertically specific software in the parking industry. So think about when you would park at a spot, you would historically use coins in a parking meter. They have ported that experience onto the software you use every day into an app to pay for that parking spot. And so prior to Phoenix, uh, Passport was registered as a third-party processor that had direct integrations into a merchant acquirer. 
And a good way to think about the, the clunkier customer experience here is imagine you go and park and start going to shopping. You realize you've lost track of time. You want to extend your parking spot time. Before, as a third party processor, if you hit that extend button, there would be two authorizations, two credit card transactions, and a really clunky customer experience. Fast forward, Passport now uses Phoenix to become a payfac. And under this new payments model, they have a much more seamless customer experience. So again, back to that example of, you know, you're going shopping, you lose track of time, you hit the button to extend your time on your parking spot. Now there's one authorization, there's one credit card transaction, and it's a really enjoyable experience for the end consumer. And what I find to be really interesting here is that Passport has recently partnered with Google Maps. So back to, back to the shopping example, uh, if you use Google Maps to get to that store, when you get to the store, you're actually able to pay for your parking in app, which to me is just the epitome of meeting customers where they are with embedded payments. Great. Thank you, Ash. That's a great example with Passport. Really appreciate that. Uh, we're going to move to our, our next and second to last segment of the panel. We'll talk a little bit about, and we mentioned this earlier, the new offering offered Phoenix Flex, which is a partnership between Phoenix and Fat Merchant. I'm going to first hand it over to Richie to talk a little bit about this new offering. Uh, thanks so much. So the way that we like to think about Flex is that it's basically the easiest path to payment facilitation. Uh, what it does is it allows software companies and ISVs to begin earning payment revenue today and really start to reduce the cost of become a pay, becoming a payment facilitator in the future. Uh, and so what Flex does is it not only expands our total addressable market to really service earlier stage companies that may not have sort of hit um, the sort of bandwidth or comfort level of becoming a payback. Uh, as Sinero mentioned, not everybody knows what even a bin sponsorship really is. It can become you know fairly overwhelming. So what we're trying to do here is lower the barrier to become a payback, uh, and we're doing it even uh, more than we had been in the past. And so what we're helping is we're helping with customers to really allow them to graduate from this Flex product over to our core payback model. And there's no traditional switching costs or any sort of technical challenges. There's no tokens to migrate, there's no book of merchants to buy, and, and there's no technical integration to complete. Flex makes it uh, as seamless as possible to really start to own your entire payment stack. Great. Thank you, Richie. Let, let's move to Sunir to talk a little bit about this new offering as well. I am so excited. I was just like, yes, yes, yes. We're so <laughs> pumped um, to partner um, on, on Phoenix Flex for this offering because it's exactly what you know we've all talked about is we want to make it as simple as possible. This is the way of the future and the future is today. And so we need to be able to get payment co uh, software companies up and running with payments uh, in a quick fashion. And in the traditional approach, it, it takes time and it takes dollars. So those are the two things that even with all the technology. And so we're really excited about partnering with uh, with Phoenix on Phoenix Flex. And it's powered by OmniConnect. And it's I'm just so excited about it because we're able to take an ISV up and running within 60 days. So in a matter of no time. So in 60 days, you can you know, say, hey, raise your hand to say, I'd like to monetize against payments and actually be taking your first charge on your customer in your software. And that is extremely powerful. Um, and as the name mentions, it's flexible. It's a flexible path for them to get started and graduate on their own terms for when they are ready to take on that payment facilitation in-house. Uh, but it does offer speed to market. It offers um, everything under one roof, as we mentioned from customer onboarding uh, for getting you know, getting all your payment facilitation needs met all the way to the actual transactions, transaction monitoring, and growing their portfolio as well. Great. Thank you, Richie and Sanira, for telling us about Flex. It sounds exciting. Let's move on to our, our last topic here, and then we'll, we'll begin to wrap up. But for Ashley, so at, at Being Capital Ventures, you've, you've had experience investing and getting familiar with companies that are embedding all types of financial services. So we talked about this a little earlier, but payments, surely, but also lending, insurance, banking. Maybe you could bring that to life a little bit with a few examples. Yeah, of course. Well, I would say this year has been the year of infrastructure or fintech infrastructure plays. And personally, I think that is because we've seen, or the market has seen firsthand, the implications of Shopify and their success with embedding financial technology products. So Shopify is a B2B e-commerce platform that lets merchants come online. 
but they've really had the second life by which they've embedded financial technology elements across the stack to become a more wholesome product for their end merchant. So a good example of this is you know, Partake Foods. Partake Foods is a merchant that sells gluten-free and vegan snacks. In the first instance, they would use Shopify to just create a website, so they would be able to deliver throughout the US or globally. But Shopify has introduced a whole suite of financial technology products that have made the experience for Partake Foods, as an example, much more sticky and dependable. So on the payment side, Shopify uh, enables a, that Partake Foods merchant to not only to accept payments quite seamlessly. On the lending side, Shopify Capital uh, is lending out to those merchants because they know so much back to this data-rich view of the merchant. They have so much information on Partake Foods and how much they sell that they can lend to them with ease. And then Shopify Balance on the banking side, so there's a debit card for Partake Foods to use. But Shopify has not only been really active on the merchant side, they've also created a lot of functionality with respect to embedded fintech on the consumer side. So in payments, they've launched Shopify Pay, so me as the consumer can buy my gluten-free snacks with one simple click. And on the lending side, they've partnered with a firm, so I can pay for those snacks in four easy payments. And I, I personally would not be surprised if they launch insurance in the next year or two for both the merchant and the end consumer. And so as we've seen companies like Shopify successfully embed financial technology elements in not just payments, but lending, uh, banking, and, and I think insurance, we've seen this whole suite of infrastructure plays to help all software companies do the same thing. And Bain has been really active behind that trend. So you know, we have a company named WiseTac, which lets software companies become lending companies. We have a company called Move, which lets software companies become banking companies. And of course, we have Phoenix, which lets software companies become payments companies. And what's the most exciting thing here is that as infrastructure players enable all software companies to become fintech companies, my job becomes a lot more fun because every company becomes a fintech company. Great. Thank you so much, Ashley. <laughs> Those are great examples too with Phoenix, Ystack, and Move. Thanks so much for that overview. Uh, we, we've come to the end of our panel session. I just want to thank everyone uh, and the folks at Money 2020 for allowing us to be here today. Thank you to Ashley, to Richie, to Sanira. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us.